What is the coffee printer? The coffee printer is this bizarre device which uh, prints coffee drip by drip. And I've got some examples over here uh, which are on the wall. So it's, it's, um, so it, it actually only prints about 32 different size driplets. But like if you're a really black one, it'll be a big drip. So it's a, it's a coffee jet instead of an ink jet. Uh, no, it just no. drips. It, it just actually, drips. It just drips. Um, I don't have it here. It's, it's actually in my basement now, but uh, it does big drips for black, black pixels. And then uh, light pixels uh, would be no drips or a very, very small drip like over here. And then as it dries, the, uh, the coffee um, shows it. It's, it's actually area. And uh, I'm sure there's videos online. There's a lot of videos it. online. <laughs> this, so if it's not, this is a binary. Uh, it, see, like pictures like this, which have uh, really, really dark um, areas will we'll flow together. together. Yeah. So it's, 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 you know, I call that art sauce. Um, the art sauce really flows on this, this and, really and this cool. has some glitches in the stage. Whenever the stage doesn't move correctly, it'll it'll do these, these so spaces. So is this pretty much like a, a plotter with a, yeah, a solenoid it's a, on it? And yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, matter of fact, it's the same solenoids as these uh, right. these little guys here. And what do you use those for? This is uh, a water dripper, and I have the students make uh, water drips to photograph when. Uh, the drip is in recoil for the mm -hmm. imaging for the high speed class. Then the instrumentation class comes back and they do the double drips and then they control the cameras and the flashes. The drips where the first one and the second one goes yep. right on and top they, of they the first hit, one. Yeah, and they do a recoil. Uh, there's some student work here. So this is a double drip. Uh, it was popularized by uh, Martin Waugh out in Portland, Oregon uh -huh. um, back, oh, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago. And so these double drips, uh, uh, the, the lighting in the background is one of the big the big deals with that. And so here's another example of a water drip. Uh, one of the lab groups did that. So are these so are those special solenoids? Are they no, they're they're like industrial two or three dollar solenoids. Oh, really? They're all over the place in the internet and surplus and the twelve volt solenoids normally closed, so they, they work pretty fast and right. make nice drips without too much trouble. All right. Most of them. Some of them are a little buggy. You do some classic, yeah, this classic is, this bullets. This is the classic apples. stuff. This is the bullet through the apple. Do you shoot a gun in here? Yes, we shoot a gun in here. Whoa. Uh, this is syrup on like a pancake. It's caro syrup. Uh, this is a, uh, a paintball hitting an egg. <laughs> so, and of course, all of these, these two are um, the old micro flashes, which are the old E, G, and G micro flashes, okay. which are a little bit... Uh, longer duration than the flashes we use, which what's, is a, what's a spot the, I mean, flash. normal flashes can go up to like a twentieth of a second on full output. The ones that uh, you would buy for a camera. How how fast are these? These are one millionth of a second Oops. or shorter. Um, typically, uh, the one I use here in lab is uh, five hundred nanoseconds. Whoa! Which I'll show it to you. I set it up here just for a student to look at. What, what do you one. what do you do to make it that short? Is that it's an air gap flash? So it's high voltage discharge. Okay. In air, usually on a quartz surface, okay. so uh, we can draw pictures. So in this case, uh, it pretty much freezes the majority of the motion. Uh, there'll be a little bit of blur here, depending on uh, how well tuned the flash circuitry is at that moment. How do you trigger those? This is triggered with a ballistic sensor, which which triggers two uh, optical traps. Uh -huh. So it it. The bullet comes by, makes a shadow on, a, on an infrared beam. That starts a microprocessor clock. The bullet passes by the second trigger point, uh -huh. and the, the microprocessor says it's this amount of time. And then, because the microprocessor has to do a lot of stuff very quickly, we say this amount of time, and then as a multiple of that, we'll set off the flash. So, right. like typically, like a multiple of four. So we pretty much start down. a clock at that point. We start a clock, and then we say four times at that time, we're going to set off the flash. Mm -hmm. So the, the code isn't that tough to, that to do, but it has calibration. to be fast. The alignment, yeah, has yeah. to be very, very fast. Um, the alignment has to be good. The electronics have to be very fast. And, uh, and sometimes there's, there's a little bit of a, a delay in the, in the infrared sensors. So if these bullets are supersonic, the sensors have a hard time detecting them. Mm -hmm. And I'm... I need to build up a better way of detecting high-speed bullets 
uh, and sensing as they go by to get ballistics up because two or three times the speed of sound, there's some, there's some fun things happening there. How about and using high-speed video cameras for this kind of stuff? The, the trouble with the high-speed video camera is you have to get uh, enough light. And, and this is one light which is giving about eight joules of energy. Uh -huh. um, what would that be in what seconds? Joules? Well, I don't know the... Joules. It's a joule per math. second is, is a watt. But um, okay. the energy stored in the capacitor and discharge is about eight joules. Of, that um, is... It's very little. It's not a lot. But the, yeah. the trouble with high speed is it has... The, the camera is going to take... Uh, thousands of pictures to get, you and know, or 10,000 pictures. It's coming from a, from a permanent light source, yeah, which so it has, uh, to be, has to be very, very bright. There. Very, very bright. So that's the trouble with, with high-speed video. And the video camera is uh, rolling shutter, so you get rolling shutter effects. Uh, well, well, with a still camera, you, you don't. Most of the, of the high-speed work done these days is with a motion, with some sort of video, high-speed video camera, mm -hmm. and extracting data out of that video stream. Right. So we can do all sorts of stuff with that. And, uh, and that's really where it is. You know, number, people want to know how fast it is. Did this thing break at this time? Um, what's going on with this machine process? Right. What was the defamation of, of certain surfaces? How much did it deform? So Where does this get applied? Uh, the, students, the students end up going to everywhere from NASA to the companies that smash cars to figure out safety. Um, Lots of uh, other places in between. A lot of the students now are ending up in uh, evaluating sensors for, for self-driving cars. Uh, cars are one of the biggest consumers of cameras these days. I, with I know, yeah. Huge numbers are being bought up by the, the car manufacturers as they put multiple cameras on every car. And they have to have the correct characteristics for that. They have to have a good uh, um, uh, response across the spectrum as well right. as being able to see in low light conditions mm -hmm. as well as being able to tell the difference between uh, the white sky and a white truck next to the car. It's kind so, of nuances, yeah. Yeah, so it's very complicated stuff. Um, but we'll see a lot, of, a lot of the students are going into those. Um, a, lot of, a lot of students end up in uh, military applications figuring mm -hmm. out how things explode or how to protect uh, people from explosions or testing bulletproof vests or um, all sorts of applications. And every time a student comes back and they're like, I do this, I'm like, wow, I didn't even realize that was a thing. Mm -hmm. but, um, Any, anything that surprised you, like really surprised you? Um, really surprised? I, I, yeah, they come back and they talk about some equipment that, that I'm like, wow, they're doing, they're doing what? Oh, you really? Know? Okay. And, and, Stuff that they, yeah. that, that they probably not even should. Yeah, talk they're about. doing like laser <laughs> measurements and holography with these ultra short laser bursts and and doing mapping of components to figure out how fast some fragments are going and right. um, and they shoot way fast. So you know, uh, multiple times the speed of sound uh, in motion. So the students are they, they they start their training here, but you know we don't have classified equipment here, and so. They start here and then they go out and they do other things. So it's a good base.